Hi guys, this is a tutorial for total beginners in yoga. It means you've never done yoga before, or maybe you've done a little bit of yoga, but you want to make sure that you're doing your posture safely, correctly. Or maybe you are a yoga instructor and you are looking for tutorials on how to teach the basic poses. I'm Noko Mabo and I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel by clicking the bottom right corner of the screen, like this video, and also grab your welcome packet in the description below. So today you will need a mat, two blocks or two books, and a pillow. Let's get started. The first pose is child pose. Child pose is a resting pose. It means that when you're taking a class, anytime you need a break, or maybe there's a, um, an exercise that's too difficult, too challenging, you can get into your child pose for as long as you want to. It's also really great pose because it stretches the low back, relaxes and lengthens those muscles. Um, so it's a pose you can do at the end of the day when your back feels tired. So let's get started. On our hands and knees, we keep the big toes touching and we open the knees wide. And then what we do, we press the heels down. And then we want to press the chest towards the floor. And arms extended sideways. So the reason we open the knees is to allow our torso to go deeper. As you get more flexible, you'll feel the stretch here in your hips, maybe in your low back, but you'll also be able to go deeper with your torso. Initially, you may be right here. And then as you become more flexible or you want a deeper stretch, you'll go all the way down with your chest. Okay, so we open, you want to make sure your knees are open, toes together. Uh, if your head is hanging in the air here, Okay, you're not reaching all the way down, or it's not comfortable. You can use a block, books, place your forehead. Other options include a pillow. Let's say your hips are not going all the way down. You can place a pillow. You can have your block here. Okay. If you don't have a block, you can also make one or two fists under your forehead. Other options for your child pose, and you have to pick the one that works best for you, is to have the arms extended forward. Right here. Let's bring the hands underneath the shoulders, push the floor away. So this is child pose balasana. Second pose, it's uh, the cat and cow stretch. So we start in tabletop. You want your fingers spread out wide and I explain in a different video how to protect your wrist from uh, getting inflamed in yoga. But for today, make, make like a starfish. Open your fingers as wide as possible with the index fingers pointing straight ahead and try to press the knuckles into the mat so that you don't have too much pressure on the heel of your hand. Let's do the cat and cow. From a tabletop position, you're gonna start by tucking your tailbone under, spreading your shoulder blades apart, tucking the chin under, and you feel the stretch going from the tailbone all the way up your neck. And then cow is the opposite. We release the tailbone, drop the belly, push the chest forward, gaze slightly forward or even up. And again, tucking tailbone into a cat, cat stretch. And cow. This is an excellent exercise to warm up your spine. Okay, the next pose is the cobra. That's another heart opener. We lay on our mat. Hands underneath the shoulders. Elbows stacked in. We want to press the feet down into the mat. So we not we do not tuck the toes under. Okay, press the top of the feet. And we want the legs engaged. So here my legs are completely relaxed. So what I want to do is squeeze my legs and notice how my knee caps lift off the mat. Depending on the shape of your legs, they may not lift off, but your thighs are still engaged. So we lift up off the floor with the knees 
and tailbone pressing down and we'll just open the chest here pushing chest forward gazing straight forward this is cobra and relax now if you want to go deeper you could extend the arms a little bit more or even completely let's do down facing dog down facing dog initially can be very challenging when you become advanced this is a resting pose um, it's really good because it stretches your entire body from the heels all the way through your hamstring your low back your shoulders it requires some strength in the upper body as well i'm going to show you several modifications so starting on all fours tabletop now remember your tabletop you want your belly lifted and sometimes we sink we drop into the shoulders here so what I want to do is press my hands into the floor press my shoulders towards the floor away from my ears okay we want to avoid this press away from the floor avoid locking the elbows forward so if you have your arms hyperextending like mine it's gonna be a bit more challenging because you're gonna to have to have a micro bend in your elbow so to me, this feels like my elbows are bent, okay, but I know they're not, which requires the engagement of the triceps here. So it's a bit more challenging, but you want to protect your wrist. So pressing those hands down, fingers spread apart, shoulders pressing down. And from here, what we do, we tuck the toes under. We inhale, as we exhale, we lift the knees off the floor. We press the chest back. And we can keep the knees bent, that's one modification. We can extend the knees, but the heels are lifted. And we can go deeper by pressing the heels down. So, the main um, error I see in the position is that we're trying to go with the heels down right away. Okay, because we think uh, it's for our ego, we want to to show that we can press the heels down. It's not a goal. The goal is to maintain your spine straight. Okay, so it's better to have your heels lifted, knees bent. And from here, you want a straight line from your wrist through your shoulder, through your tailbone. Because what happens when we press the heels down, I see a lot of students doing this, watch my shoulders. They come forward with the shoulders. Here, you're not stretching anymore. You're not doing a down-facing dog anymore. So modify your down-facing dog by bending your knees. Pressing the chest back, can hold it right here. Once you're maybe warmer, you become more flexible, keep the heels lifted, extend your knees. And then you can press the heels down. And I'm pretty sure you can, if this is your first time doing yoga, this is challenging, it is normal to feel tired. So what you can do, get into your child pose, remember? Okay. There's a mod another modification. So I showed you how to bend your knees, how to keep the heels lifted. And I'm going to show you another modification. It's actually, the, it's called the dolphin, but it's the same thing. It's on the, the forearms instead of on the hands. Initially, you may have um, difficulties spending a lot of time with your hands on the mat in yoga. It's normal. Do not force it because you're going to get inflamed and the inflammation is going to linger. Instead, you place your forearms into the mat, hands flat, still using our uh, starfish hands. And we'll do the same thing, we tuck the toes under, we lift the heels, press the chest back, and then if we want, we can extend the knees and we press the heels down, okay? And you'll notice that your shoulders want to come forward because it's easy on your body. So press back, 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 back. That's our child pose. The last pose I'm going to show you today is a twist. So twist can be any position where your hips are facing straight forward and your shoulders in other direction. You want to think of your twist starting from the belly button up. Okay. So in this position, it's easy to do it and we'll do it standing. It's a little bit more difficult because we start engaging the hips. Today, we're going to do it as a relaxing pose. On our back during your twist make sure your shoulders are 
facing straight up and try to keep them facing straight up as much as possible. We're gonna pull on, the, on actually, we're gonna keep the feet on the floor so your heels are close to your glutes. We're gonna open the arm sideways, so imagine this arm is also down and the palms of the hands are pressing down. Imagine you're gonna glue your shoulders into the floor. From here we lift the hips, scoop the hips to the left, drop the knees to the right. You should feel a stretch in your low back. Now if you notice that your knees are hanging in the air here, we want to adjust that. We want to support our knees, our legs. Different ways to do it. You can place one, one block underneath your bottom thigh and one in between or one block and one pillow so that you can fully relax. If you don't use blocks and pillows, it means that you have the range of motion, you have the flexibility to bring both knees on the floor and keeping your shoulders straight up. Otherwise, if your knees are hanging in the air, you're basically straining your back instead of relaxing it. See if you can press your opposite shoulder down into the floor a bit more. An option to turn your chin to the opposite side. And when we are done, First thing we do is bring the knees back to center. So here you have it. Uh, today we did um, the chapels, the cat, the cow, cobra, down facing dog, and we did a twist. Thank you so much for your time. Review those poses, join me for your flow. That's the next step, putting all those poses together without interruption so that we practice what we learned today. From my heart to yours, with love, namaste.